people who are of my generation can, like me, probably recall with fondness the excitement of receiving Christmas catalogs every year back in the 80s and things when, when, uh, when companies would send out these huge two to three inch thick catalogs, uh, real thin paper too. It's not like they were thick, thick paper. It's really thin paper, two to three inches uh, catalogs of just whatever they had on sale for Christmas then, right? And of course, as kids, we would immediately flip to the toy section and just check out all the toys that they had listed there conveniently for us with descriptions and prices and things that we could go through. I'd go through and circle everything that I was interested in, all the Star Wars stuff. I just, you know, just highlight that entire page basically in any action figure. Um, but I love Star Wars and I would just circle everything there and just make a list for my parents then, right? Write down all of the, the items and the page numbers and the everything on this. I would make a very detailed list for them to make it as easy as possible. And I would g g give them this list, right? That was, you know, for Santa Claus or whatever. You know, and you rarely received a lot of stuff from the list, but still it was really exciting, exciting to think about. And I, was, I always loved that part of it. And, and in many ways, it was great preparation for me for media pitches. When I would later on start doing media pitches, to understand the excitement of, you know, I want these things, but I have to go through my parents to get these toys, right? To, to convince them why they should get them for me. Not only that my behavior had been good enough or whatever that I'd, you know, earn those toys in that way, but that it was, it was, they were cheap, really. They were affordable for us. And it was really good. To, that type of persuasion was really good for me to learn uh, in terms of how to do effective media pitches. So um, I want to talk a little bit today about those things exactly, media pitches, right? That's where we're headed with this. This video is going to just explain real quickly what is a media pitch and uh, and how do you put one together? What are some of the best practices to use? So let's jump in and talk a little bit about what a media pitch is to begin with. And very simply, it's just a request for uh, media outlets to cover your story, your topic, your event, whatever it is for them to, to care and to put it in their program or to report on it or do whatever it is you're asking them to do. So a media pitch is just basically a sales pitch to a media outlet to cover your thing, right? to make your thing part of their thing. So what exactly goes into a media pitch? There are three basic components that need to be in every media pitch. And, and media pitches should be simple, but that doesn't mean they shouldn't be effective and thought out and things, but they should contain these three things really. Um, the first is the lead. Just like a news story, you need to you need to hook your reader, your audience there. They need something uh, that establishes your thing as newsworthy. And you can refer to uh, a video that we put that we produced on news values, talking about what are those things that that make something newsworthy. And that's going to vary from outlet to outlet, and from story to story, and from day to day. But there are those those categories of things that make something newsworthy and that have news value. Make something have news value. And so you need to be aware of what those are and uh, and put that right up front in this news pitch as well. Your media pitch needs to have a lead, something to hook them and explain why your thing is newsworthy and why they should care. So then next, we need to have a very clear call to action. You've explained what your thing is. So now we need to, to, to say, what is it that we're asking them? What are we asking them to do? As a result of this, are we asking them to conduct an interview or write an article, publish a story? Are we asking them to, to do a review of your product or your, your video or your, your music or whatever? Are we asking them to include it in their current coverage saying this really goes along with what you're already doing, the story you've, you've been reporting on, whatever it is, what are we asking them to do specifically? And it should be specific. It should be very clear and very specific. All of these things should be, but what is it that we're asking them to do? Uh, then finally, we need to offer a, a value proposition, uh, which is essentially just explaining how your thing adds to their thing, right? Now, why should they care? We talked in previous videos about how the media is, it's, it's a business, right? The media is there to make money, but they're there to serve their audience so that they can uh, make it more appealing to advertisers, right? So they have a thing that they have to do though. So what is it that we have here that's going to add value to what they're doing and what they need to accomplish and what their goals are. So we need to explain how these things uh, intersect, how they are connected, how they work together, and how what we have is important to what they're trying to accomplish as well, or can help them accomplish those things as well. So what's the value of the thing that we have based on what they're trying to do as well? So you need to have all three of these things very clearly laid out in your pitch, simply but clearly a lead, a call to action, and a value proposition of some sort. Okay, 
Let's talk a few seconds about best practices when uh, conducting media pitches and when you're sending out media pitches. Um, first things first, you have to know what it is you want. You have to be very clear on what your objective is in this pitch, what you're trying to accomplish here. Are you trying to get them to come to your event? Are you trying to get them to write an article? Are you trying to just promote this idea? Um, whatever it is, you need to know what it is you want before you can explain how it's important to them, how it meets their needs, how it reaches their audiences, so forth. You first have to very, have a very clear idea of what it is you want. You cannot be wishy-washy on this and just send things out and say, eh, here's this thing. I thought you might be interested. If so, great. If not, whatever, that's not, that's not going to get anywhere. Right. If I did that with my, my Christmas list, right. If I just said to my parents, eh, these are some things that I might be interested in, but maybe not. If it works for you, then great. If not, because there's no way I was getting anything on that list that because if I didn't care about it, if I didn't know what I wanted, so I was very specific and very detailed uh, about my desires before I ever put that list together and sent it out to them. The same thing with media pitches. You have to start by knowing what it is you want. Okay. Next, you need to be targeted. These people receive a lot of pitches on a daily basis, right? They're getting news from all different places. And so you have a lot of competition here. You have to be targeted in, first of all, who you're trying to reach uh, and knowing that audiences are fragmented. We're going to talk about that in a second here, but you need to know who their audience is and what they're trying to do and be targeted about who you're sending it to. Again, don't just throw it out to everybody and see what sticks. Be targeted about who you're sending it to and be targeted in sending it to specific people, identifying those people within that media outlet as, as who you're trying to reach with this pitch and, and uh, are they the decision makers and things like that as well. So be very targeted with who you're sending this pitch to. Don't just send out a, a spam message and hope that it works out because it will not. You also need to know their audience. Note, I said their audience because, and knowing your audience is important, but that's how going to lead you to know who you need to contact because you need to know their audience as well. Media in the current uh, landscape is very fragmented. Okay. You don't have just three channels as we did back in the day, right? And when you, you know, and you saw on TV, it was going to reach a third of the people who are watching TV probably, right? Not anymore. People are very fragmented. Media is very fragmented. So you need to know okay, who specifically am I trying to reach and does this uh, align with the audience for this outlet. You need to know their audience so that you know, first of all, that you're reaching the people that you want to reach as part of your, your uh, media strategy, but also so that you're, you're giving this outlet something that they can use. Again, they want to reach a specific audience. They want to reach the people that they want to reach and find and provide something that's appealing to them. So you need to know who it is they're trying to reach so that you can say to them that value proposition, this is why this is important to you. Right. This is important to your audience, which means it should be important to you. So you first need to know the audience of any media outlet that you're going to pitch to. It's also better if you make it as easy as possible on them. I don't know anybody who really wants to work harder and make something more difficult. That's, that's, you know, not something people are usually trying to do. Uh, so if we can make it easier on them instead of more difficult, uh, if we can provide them uh, again, the justification and the reasoning for why this is important uh, for their audiences, and then we can provide it to them in a, in a structure that is easy for them to grab information, right? Usually that's like the inverted pyramid structure of media where we're putting the headline up front, you know, leading with the, the most important information. Then we fill in that other data uh, underneath that as well, but we can make it as easy on them to do their jobs that makes it more likely that our, our thing is going to get picked up. If they don't have to work extra hard to do it, then it's, you know, a better shot at getting it, uh, uh, getting a successful pitch out of it. Okay. And then finally we need to follow up, but you got to be careful in following up as well. It is important that we follow up on these things and make sure you know, did you receive my information? Do you have any questions or anything I can, I can do as you're working on this to, to make it easier on you and to, to, you know, to make information available to you or make, you know, spokespeople available to you or whatever it is. So we need to follow up, but you don't want to be irritating. You want to give people a chance to look things over and, uh, and, and you want to respect when they say no um, as well, but, but you do have the, the uh, a requirement to follow up and they understand that as well, but you want to follow up with, again, be targeted in your follow-ups. Don't send out just a generic message like this one saying, hello, outlet. I'm following up on my email earlier this week. See below. They got to do more work than to find your pitch again. Have you had a chance to consider this story? Peace, whatever. This is not an appropriate way to reach out to, first of all, anybody professionally, but, but this tells them that you don't know who they are. 
and you don't really know, you know, you're just throwing it out to everybody. Uh, you haven't given any consideration to whether it's something they can use or, or, or would be interested in. So you need to be targeted in your follow-ups as well right? and, and identify who you're reaching out to and following up with and, uh, and, you know, give them, make it as easy as possible, give them the correct information and so forth. Uh, but your follow-up has to be targeted in the same way that your pitch is targeted and, and should be well thought out as well. Ideally, all of this will lead you to the perfect pitch. Now, if there is such a thing, of course, um, no pitch is going to be perfect for every outlet and always be successful. But again, there are things we can do to give our pitch a better shot. Those are some things that we can do to enhance the likelihood of our pitch getting picked up. And if we can make it easier and we can make it more appealing and we can explain how it lines up with what they're trying to accomplish anyway, then we've got a better shot at having our pitch picked up. But we need to consider all these things when we're putting this together and be very intentional with what we're sending and who we're sending it to and why we're targeting those specific organizations. If you have questions about media pitches or anything else, please feel free to email me. I'd love to hear from you there. Uh, in the meantime, I hope that this has been helpful in just kind of give you some, giving you some insight in just the basics of what's involved in a media pitch and some of the best practices that will help your media pitch be as effective as possible when you send it and reach out to those media outlets.